Hi, this is Mrs. Erickson, and welcome to Populations and Ecosystems Investigation 5 Vocab. This is your homework for tonight, so you should be uh, recording this in the divider of your binder for Investigation 5. You want to have these in the classroom with you to use. <clears throat> Here we go. First word is autotroph. An autotroph is any organism that can make their own food by using the sun through photosynthesis. So anything that has chloroplasts would be considered an autotroph. They have to have chloroplasts because they need to use the sun to make their own food. Autotroph. A heterotroph is an organism that can't make its own food. They have to go out and find their food somehow. So you guys looked at single-celled organisms that were heterotrophs, like the paramecium. You watched it surround yeast and eat yeast. That would be considered a heterotroph. Um, of course, a line would be considered a heterotroph, but even bunnies and worms and anything that needs to find their food and eat it. They, they don't have chloroplasts in their cells. Then there's many different kinds of heterotrophs. So the first one that we're going to talk about is called herbivores. Herbivores are animals that eat just plants or producers. That's all they eat. They don't eat any animal products at all. They are strictly plant eaters. Usually these organisms are lower on the food chain. Most of the time they're smaller animals, but not always. You can think of a herbivore that's big, like a deer. But all they do is eat plants or producers. Uh, we call these primary consumers because they are at the bottom of a, a pyramid uh, in an ecosystem because all they eat is plants. A carnivore is an animal that eats other animals. They don't eat any plants, so they're called a carnivore. Uh, you can have a carnivore in any shape and size again, just like you can herbivores, but usually we think of large animals, and most of the time they're larger animals, but not always. But carnivores eat other animals. A spider is considered a carnivore because it forms a web to catch insects. Insects are an animal, so a spider would be considered a carnivore. But then you have organisms that eat both. So they have a special name too. Omnivores, animals that eat plants and other animals. Um, humans are considered omnivores. Of course, humans can make choices. So uh, if a human chooses to eat just plants, they're called a vegetarian. So in, for our purposes in an ecosystem, we're talking about animals that fit into and live in an ecosystem. Omnivores would be animals that eat both plants and animals. So a bear likes to eat berries, um, honey, things like that, but it will also go fishing in streams for fish, so it eats both. A lot of our birds up here in, in Fargo will eat both. They will eat worms, they'll eat insects, but they'll also eat seeds and berries and so forth. Then you have something called a scavenger. A scavenger are animals that usually eat dead organisms. So like the worm, a lot of times we'll eat dead plant tissue, dead animal tissue, whereas vultures in this picture, they're going to eat just dead animals. Uh, they're considered scavengers because they're helping to break down those dead organisms. They're breaking them down into smaller parts. So they're called scavengers when they eat other dead organisms and they break those organisms down, of course, into smaller parts when they eat them. But the very very end of the food chain is called a decomposer. A decomposer breaks down dead things back into soil, back into chemical parts that is part of our soil. The biggest decomposers in an ecosystem are your fungi, which mushrooms would be a type of a fungi, and then bacteria. All different kinds of bacteria break down dead things. And so those are the two main decomposers in an ecosystem. You walk through the forest and you see a tree that's dead uh, laying on the ground. It's been there for years. 
you're going to see different kinds of fungi growing on it because it's breaking down that log basically into soil. And of course you can't see the bacteria doing its job because bacteria is microscopic. But um, if you can't even recognize what the thing is that you're seeing that's dead, bacteria is doing its job. It's breaking it down into chemical parts that we call soil. That's the end of Investigation 5 vocab. I hope you recorded these into your binder. Come to class tomorrow ready to use these vocab words.